Anyway, I, I don't want to sound like, like things are too dark because I think like you, you kind of have to be optimistic about the future. There's no point in being pessimistic. It's just too negative. It like, doesn't help. No, it doesn't help. You know, I think you want to be – I mean, my theory is like you'd rather be optimistic. I think I'd rather, I'd rather be optimistic and wrong than pessimistic and right. Right. At least or on that side. Right. Yeah. Because if, if you're pessimistic, you're just going to be miserable. Yeah. Yeah, nobody wants to be around you anyway. If it's the end of the world, you're like, I fucking told you, bro. Yeah. The world's exactly. ending. Yeah. It is I what mean, it is for all. I mean, enjoy the journey. Right. If you really want to get morose, I mean, it is what it is for all of us anyway. We, we're all going to go, unless some something changes. Yeah. In a, I, I mean, ultimately, you know, even if we just sort of existed as humans, Forever, we'd be, we'd still eventually, that'd be like the heat death of the universe. Right. A zillion years from now. Right. Um, Even if we get it past the sun. If we yeah. figure out a way past the sun running out of juice. Eventually, it's going to end. It's just a Something. question of when. Right. So it really is all about the journey. Hmm. Or transcendence from whatever we are now into something that doesn't worry about death. The universe as we know it will dissipate into a fine mist of cold nothingness eventually. And then someone's going to bottle it and put a fragrance to it, sell it to French people in another dimension. <laughs> it's just a very long time. So yeah. I think it's really just about how can we make it last longer. Are you a, a proponent of the multi-universes theory? Do you believe that there are many, many universes and that even if this one fades out, that there's other ones that are starting fresh right now and there's an infinite number of them? And they're just constantly in this never-ending cycle of birth and death? I think most likely, this is just about probability, there are many, many simulations. These simulations are, you might as well call them reality, or you could call them the multiverse. These simulations, you believe, are created? Like someone has manufactured? They're running on the substrate. So? That substrate is probably boring. Boring? Mm-hmm. How so? Well, when we create a simulation, like a game or a movie, it's the distillation of what's interesting about life. You know, like it, it takes, it can take a year to shoot an action movie. And then that's all distilled down into two or three hours. So let me tell you, if you see an action movie being filmed, it's friggin' it's boring, super boring. It takes... There's like lots of takes. There's, everything's in a green screen. Looks pretty goofy. Doesn't look cool. <laughs> but once you add the CGI it's, and have great editing, it's amazing. So I think most likely, if we're a simulation, it's really boring outside the simulation. Because why would you make a simulation that's boring? It makes simulation way more interesting than the base reality. Th that is if this right now is a simulation. Yes. And ultimately, inevitably, we're, if, as long as we don't die or get hit by a meteor, we're going to create some sort of simulation if we continue on the same technological path we're on, we're on right now. Yes. But we might not be there yet. So it might not be a simulation here. But it most likely is, you feel, other places. <laughs> this notion of place or where is, mm. is a... Flawed. Yes. Flawed like perception. Where, like right. that, if you have this sort of, that uh, Vive, you mm -hmm. know, which with a, that's made by Valve, and, Steam and H it's really Valve that made it. HTC did the hardware, but it's really a Valve thing. Um, Makers of Half-Life. Yes. Hmm. Valve, great company. Great company. 